guys, substations are popping up everywhere. I mean, they've been around for a while, but there's this new topic that's trending. Well, new conversationally, at least substation automation. That's why I'm here at Westermo with Daniel, and he's going to tell us a little more about it. Yeah, so it's a very big topic, and as you mentioned, it's been around for a very long time, but what's happening now is that they're making more and more into automation. There's less people around, so they want to automate as much as possible and use networks in the best way forward. So Westermo is in the scene, clearly, because Daniel knows what he's talking about. They have some products that are specific to the application, and they all kind of do slightly different things, but I'd say the baseline is communication, right? Correct, yes. Okay, and the ruggedness of that yes. communication. Yes, yeah. It depends a little bit if you're inside a, a cabinet where you have a rack mount unit like mm -hmm. this one, or if you Big need one. something a little bit more slim. Uh, this is one of those switches in a little bit different architecture. Uh, so it all depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, something I noticed about these that it just is kind of hitting me now is when I've seen a lot of these kinds of products before, this is like actually physically very rugged as yeah, well. Correct. I imagine internally is kind of the same thing is that it's all very strongly connected and well made, but I'm just realizing I don't think I've ever seen something made of this material that goes in there. Right. Kind of take me through like what are these ones you were telling me sometimes Fiber is not always the strongest, so you need another layer of connection. Can you walk me through that? Sure. So, so this is one of those units where you have both a fiber interface and also cellular connection. So in most places, you have a fiber as your main communication. But mm -hmm. in certain cases, it could take a while to get the fiber there. So, yeah. so installation could take a while. And then you may want to have a cellular at first. And then you can have fiber as a primary and then cellular as a backup. So this is one of those yeah. joint units where you can have both. Yeah. Or you can have multiple units, so uh, something like that, where you have this one coming in with fiber and that, and this one being the cellular backup, for instance. Is the benefit of just having this in one that it's less space, or why would you want it in one unit? Yes, so that's basically it. You, you save on space in mm -hmm. your cabinet, or you save on whatever your sort of niche are in that case. Okay, yeah, because I was thinking about it, and whenever I got fiber run to my house, I remember it was very difficult to do, so if I would have had at that time two separate options while I was waiting on fiber, I would have appreciated yeah. that, but too bad I didn't know you guys yet. No, <laughs> and there's a lot of people digging things in the ground, so sometimes you have digging accidents where they cut the fiber to a substation, so then you want to have a rapid failover to, to another primary outgoing connection in that case. Yeah, well, guys, clearly he knows what he's talking about with substations. We barely scratch the surface. So if you want to learn more, you're going to have to reach out to Daniel personally or anyone else on the Westermo USA team. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Guys.